Well, we're here at the Platform Cooperativism Conference where we're fundamentally imagining new ways that technology um, can create an economy that works for all of us. And I'm excited to have Michelle Miller here, who's the co-founder of coworker.org, which is a technology platform that's fundamentally reinventing the way workers can advocate for the future that they deserve. So coworker.org is current, we're in our current iteration, um, a digital platform for worker voice is the sort of very pithy uh, way that we describe what we do. We're the front door to labor organizing on the internet. So we provide campaigning tools um, through the platform and then strategic support through our staff to people who want to create change in their own workplaces. And the sort of functionality is that you create a campaign on coworker.org, we help you connect that campaign to as many of your coworkers online as possible. And then we build these uh, decentralized but digitally connected networks of employees who can start to think about how as a collective they can shift power inside their workplaces. Our largest and most active network is a network of Starbucks baristas. We have um, almost 40,000 baristas who've run 50 campaigns on the site. That's about 15% of Starbucks global workforce and they're distributed across about 30 countries. Um, and this, I think it's really important to talk about how this network actually got started. Three years ago a woman in Atlanta, Georgia wanted to overturn the company's ban on visible tattoos. It was a small issue um, and most of the labor movement laughed at us at the time and said, why are you helping this woman uh, get visible tattoos? Aren't there much more important issues going on at Starbucks? But we felt that it was important, one, to help workers wherever they are and with whatever issue they had. And we also knew that if they had the experience of collective advocacy actually working, um, and they started to build that muscle around organizing, that it probably would eventually lend to other kinds of campaigns. And that's exactly what happened. So Christy built a network of 15,000 of her employees. From there, that network has more than doubled on the platform platform and they've been winning things like wage increases, scheduling, um, other dress code reforms, all because they've been in this learning process of really figuring out where to push on power inside the company and see change. We actually built coworker.org in response to the ways in which workers were using those sort of private platforms. Um, there were lots of workers starting campaigns on change.org um, around changing some specific working condition or forming um, groups on Facebook. But in those circumstances, private companies own all of the data, they own all of the lists, they own the network that workers are building. And workers can't re-access that. That's like a one-time deal. You run one campaign and then all those names go back into some list somewhere. And in the Facebook example, you know, this is a private company that can shut down your private space anytime they want to. Um, and we've seen examples of there were a group of Amazon employees who had a Google website and they were organizing through that Google website and Google just shut it down. Um, and they had to campaign to get the thing turned back on. So we have to be creating spaces that are owned by workers where they know that they can always come back and um, no matter what they're campaigning on and no matter who they're targeting, they're gonna be able to have a private independent space that they own. This is fundamentally about controlling technology because whoever controls the technology is gonna control our future. And we believe that workers deserve the chance to be able to shape their own future and technology is gonna play a big role. Our model is to just learn from workers as they go. And what we started to see really early on was one, that workers framed their own campaigns and the stories of what was happening to them. So there's a sort of inherent narrative uh, structure to the way that they're articulating campaigns. But what we've also seen is that workers make comments or engage in the campaign and become really great storytellers that journalists are actually hungry to hear from. And so when you can actually get that authentic story about what's happening inside a company, I think it really makes a difference in the reporting and it contains so much more than just the thing the worker's talking about. It often points to many other trends and patterns that are happening inside companies. So actually every coworker.org network has a media committee um, that are the people that tell the story of that workforce to journalists whenever they want to hear what's going on. The data is basically owned by the workers in the network. Um, so we've been experimenting actually with this idea that you could start to um, poll and survey workers within networks and identify frontline issues. So what we thought was, you know, we would take the same practices that pool data through surveys and polling and actually aggregate that and give it back to workers. You know, data is the, the currency right now of so many of these companies. It is the thing that they use to have power over us. And so what we're trying to do is like, 
return that the power of that data to the groups of workers. I think at this point, um, the metrics will be we need a field of innovation. We need models like coworker and hundreds of coworkers to emerge in the field um, so that we can actually figure out not how to mimic what Silicon Valley is doing, but actually take it and hack it apart um, so that we're building power for workers. If people want more information about us, they can go to coworker.org or they can email me at michelle at coworker.org. If you want more information about platform cooperativism and the movement to build people-powered people -powered platforms, you can visit Platform co